Hi, I'm Jen Keller. I am a local artist and illustrator here in the city of Aurora. I'm so happy to be here with you guys tonight here to do this draw along art lesson of our lovely Tonka from the Phillips Park Zoo. Um, so anyway, um, uh, yeah, so let's get started. Everybody have their pencils and their paper and erasers and let's go. All right. So uh, first of all, we're going to start with an underdrawing. I've already kind of started a little bit here. Um, when you do your underdrawing, you have to make sure to go really, really light. You want to be really light because you're going to be erasing a lot of these lines. So it's just the structure of it. So we're going to start out with a nice big circle right here. And if you can see, I, I don't know if you can see it or not, I kind of have a little cheater that I started for you guys because I just didn't want to spend tons of time doing the underdrawing. But you want to make a nice big circle. And that's that big circle in his head right here. Nice big circle. Then we're going to do another circle. And this is going to be for his muzzle because they have these like they're not as pointy as like a canine, the, the big cats, or any cats, frankly. But you're gonna do, and what's important when you do the second circle, you don't want it in the middle, because what we have here is a three-quarter view picture, which means it's, uh, you know, three-quarters of a face. <laughs> so anyway, so now we're gonna do a smaller circle and you want it off to the side just like his face is sort of off to the side so I'll wait for a second make sure everyone has their circles so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mark the center lines now that's a kind of um, a, a tricky phrasing tricky is the right word but so it's not actually gonna be in the center but we're talking about the center of his face so we're going to come in and it's not going to be a straight line, right? Because his face is not flat like a square. It's round like a sphere. You want to think of this like a sphere. So our center line is going to go around kind of like this. See, center of that circle it's starting to look like the planet Earth, right? In the equator around the Earth. And then we have, maybe we're in the top view. No, that wouldn't make any sense. But anyway, I was thinking this would be like the moon. And then you're going to have a center in this. And now think about this. This, the whole front part is kind of that bottom circle. So we're going to mark another center. Center line there, marking the center of our circles. And I'll give you guys a second. Um, yeah, so this is our foundation. And you want to make sure when you're doing this underdrawing, I probably should have said this earlier. You want to draw really, really light. I'm drawing a little heavier than I probably would because I want you to see it, but you're going to be erasing a lot of these lines. So we're just uh, marking stuff out. So once we have that, we're going to do the, the front center line. Now this line is going to go through both of our shapes, right? It's going to be marking the center of his face right here. So we're going to start at kind of the top in the middle, and then we're going to bring that line around here. Kind of reminding me of like a, <clears throat> a monkey <laughs> these two little circle shapes so yeah so this is our foundation for our our head and and this foundation is very important because i always like to say like everyone wants to get down to the nitty-gritty and draw like the pretty little eyes or the cute little nose but when you're building a house you wouldn't um you know Put up the curtain rods before you <laughs> pour the foundation so this is like the foundation for our drawing so once we have this foundation down now we're going to start marking out uh, where all these great features go and what we're doing right now is we're working from a source and source so this is not sort of working for your imagination but we're trying to capture this uh, fabulous the original grumpy cat i like to call him i've heard he's quite can have quite an attitude from the awesome folks at the Phillips Park Zoo. So anyway, um, so we're going to start to mark out where all his beautiful features go. So first of all, we're going to start with the eyes. Now again, since this is a three quarter view, you know, this whole half of his face is his cheek. So we're going to do his eyes here. And we're going to mark we're going to check his face. We always check our source. It looks like the inside of that eye right starts kind of right at the center 
So we're gonna do that. We're gonna kind of, we're not gonna press down with our pen. I call it, or a pencil, I call it like the invisible drawing, right? So you lift your foot, your foot, <laughs> your pencil up and bring it down and mark the inside of that eye. And then you're gonna bring it out a little further and mark this. So there we go. Now, um, big cats' eyes are pretty wide set, unlike humans who are a little bit more narrow. So you're going to want to measure this. I measured this earlier. This is about two eyes wide. Two eyes wide. One, two. And then you're going to mark the inside of that other eye right there. And so this eye is going to be a little bit smaller than this eye, right? Because it's our three quarter, our three quarter view. So I'm going to give you guys a second to catch up with that as well. Um, yeah. So another interesting fact about um, big cats <laughs> that I always find interesting is that, you know, they're so flexible and that's because they actually have extra uh, vertebrae in their spine. Isn't that cool? I learned that in my, my animal drawing class. So anyway, um, so hopefully you guys are caught up and we got the marking of where those eyes are. So now I'm gonna go in and now we've got the eyes, we're gonna go and map out the shape of this head. Cause like I said, we wanna get that foundation. And yeah, we have a circle, but his head really isn't a circle, right? Um, so we're gonna go up here and we're going to draw a diagonal line kind of coming from the top and around. He's got this big, nice jawline, right? For eating, eating his prey. And it's gonna come down around and you're gonna meet right, and then we have a curved line that kind of comes in like this, right? You see that? So this line is gonna come out for his big jawline. And then this is gonna come in and it's gonna come around this other circle that we have here. So we have this nice sort of jawline shape. We're gonna come back up here. Make sure you guys have that all down. And we're gonna do his ears. Now, look at these ears, they're nice and round. Not like your house cat, right? When your house cats are pointing, they're still kind of a triangle, but they're rounded. So we're just gonna wanna draw a curved line kind of up at the top here. Let's say like, oh, I don't know, like halfway in between the top and where our center line is here. A nice curved line. Now this ear is sitting, you don't want it to stop at the right, the top of the head, right? Because that's not where it stops. It kind of, this line is gonna come down in front of that line. We call that overlapping when we do that. Because this shape right here, the ear is in front of the back of the head. We wanna have that nice curved line that comes up like that. And now we're gonna draw his other ear. And what's cool about, what I think is cool about this like three quarter view is that um, we have, um, this other, try it's like you can see the side of his ear and the front of his ear. So we're gonna come back around and this ear kind of starts at the center. So we're gonna do that invisible marking. This is where this ear starts and this one's gonna come out and the ears are about at the same height, right? So this triangle is not going to go any higher than this one, but it's gonna kind of stick out here. But now we're looking and we're like, well that, look at, he doesn't have chubby cheeks. Look, he's got that nice strong jawline here. So we need to go in here, follow along the outside of our circle, but it's gonna come down. It's gonna tuck in, look at that, a little curve. And then it's gonna come back around. So we got curve in and then out back around our circle. And that's kind of given him that, his more strong, manly, manly jawline. All right. So 
now we've got a lot of everything mapped out, the, the, the basics, now we get to start to do the really fun stuff, right? We get to start to draw the features, which is one of my favorite things. So let's go in and we're going to start with these beautiful eyes. What a fun thing to start with. So a uh, big cat's eyes are shaped kind of like I've heard them called like a football. So you kind of draw kind of like a football shape, but like it's going in the air. So your points aren't going to be at the same spot. And he's kind of surly looking in this picture, which again, I was told is very much his personality and um, which we love. And then you're gonna have another curved line kind of coming down like that. So you see that? So we have one point up here, but the other point is a little further down. So it's like your football is soaring in the air. And then you're gonna come over and do that same shape over here, except of course it's gonna be a little smaller. It's gonna be a little smaller because we're only seeing the other half of this eye. Right? So remember, a little football shape, two footballs coming at each other. Now we're gonna come down to this nose. So the nose, because he is sort of looking to the side, we're gonna have this, oh, the nose is set a little bit further off. I always noticed when I was drawing big cats, at the zoo, their nose line, look, this kind of just lines right up with the inside of their eyes and this side too. But because of the angle, we're gonna do this a little bit of a diagonal. So we're gonna do our invisible line down here. And then again, our invisible line down here, that's gonna mark the nose. And the nose is kind of like a triangle. It is kind of like a triangle, it is a triangle. I'm gonna draw this triangle shape. for his nose. And then we're gonna come back because his nose is it's almost like a heart. There's a little dip in there, right? That center of that nose. And then we're gonna come back because we have this three quarter view, we wanna make sure to get this extra line in here. Do you see how that nose kind of sticks out like that? And that's gonna really Give it that right angle. And Big Cat's nose have a little fleshy, fleshy part in it. So if you can, you don't want to just draw a straight line. You can draw a little, a little bulbous part here. A little, little bump. I'm actually going to move this over a little bit. There we go. There we go. So yeah, so the next thing we can do, we can move on with this mouth, this pouty, cougar mouth, you have this little tiny line that comes right down from the tip of this triangle shape. And then you want to have a diagonal line going down towards the outside of that circle. And then we have some shading here, but then this line's going to come up. You know, cats either look like they're mad or then sometimes they have that goofy little smile face, right? And then this side too, we want that to come out. And then his chin is a little pointier. So we're gonna get that right in there. Pointy chin. So now we have some of our basics down. Give you guys a second to catch up. And yeah. Another fun fact about big cats, or all cats, is that they have uh, retractable claws. Isn't that cool? So canines, their claws are all the time. You know, your dog jumps up on you and he like scratches you or whatever on <laughs> accident. But cats are like, they're like little switch blades. It's so amazing. So they can make them come out and in. Isn't that cool? They're just really fascinating animals. All right, so now that we have all these basic shapes down, we're going to come back and erase some of these foundation lines because we don't need them anymore because we have everything down. So go on with your eraser and erase all these foundation lines because we don't really need them now because now we're ready putting in our windows. 
and then the curtains, right? All that stuff. Again, and here we can actually erase because <clears throat> we can't see the back of his head. So there we go. So now we have a nice foundation for our cantankerous cougar. <laughs> I just love that personality description that they gave me over at the zoo. I called them and said, I found this picture online and he looked really grumpy. And they were like, well, he kind of is really grumpy. <laughs> um, that was awesome. That was zookeeper Danny gave me this photo. And I believe zookeeper Lynn is the one that actually took it. So thank you to both of those guys who were so amazing to be helping us out. And you want a good picture at the zoo, you go right to the source, right? You go to the people that get to look at them behind the fences. So now we're gonna go in and work on some of our fun details. We're gonna go in here and we're gonna go up to these ears first. So we're gonna go to this ear that's kind of facing us. We're gonna draw another little line because it's they're they're it's really skinny, right? They're they're ear ear skin or it's pretty thin, but they have all this fuzzy fur protecting protecting their ears so you can come in and kind of with some fun little ziggy zags kind of get some of that those fuzzies in there right some fun little ziggy zags in there Ziggy zaggies. <laughs> I think that's a new technical term. Now we're going to come back over here to this other ear and we're going to do a small triangle inside here. Another little sliver. Because again, right, like this is a three quarter view. And I'm actually going to go in here to the top of my head because it's not exactly super round. It's like a little, little bump at the top. And then he's not a floating head, so I'm gonna take a little line, just a little line. So he's kind of walking towards us just to give this little diagonal for his back. And then again, we're gonna come in here. Again, he's got all this fur protecting the inside of his ears. Our technical ziggy zags. I think I want to see those foundation lines too. All right, so now that we've got those down, I'm actually going to come back right under here and draw the base of his body because again, we don't want sort of a floating head. So about halfway in between here, we can just we can just put a little line, sort of marking his neck and his chest and his shoulders, just a little diagonal line. in between there. Nice. We're getting there, right? All right. So here's some more juicy details we can get in there. So our poor big cat has no eyeballs, right? <laughs> He's got the shape of his eyes, but no eyeballs. So we're going to come back in here and these big cats have these really cool, you know, especially the mountain lions, cougars, depending on where you're from these really dark markings. And then they also, this picture, it's a little hard to see. They also have, unlike house cats, right, which have more of a sliver in their eye, big cats are a little circle. Now you don't wanna do it, you wanna have that circle. You don't wanna have the whole circle showing because that is um, not right. Otherwise he's gonna look surprised. Like if you have that circle down here, he's gonna look a little goofy, right? So the pupil, that is the technical term, I just lost me for a second. The pupil is going to be kind of coming out from underneath that line there. And then I'm going to go down here and do this little line here. He feels really grumpy, doesn't he? Super grumpy. So anyhow, there is, got his eyes in there. 
Excellent. I'm going to switch pencils because I have a tendency to, I'm pressing a little hard, so I want to keep my pencil sharp. I was prepared for that. So anyway, last couple things to finish this guy up. We're going to go in here. So we have all the basics, right? We have the ears, we have the eyes, we have the nose, we have the mouth. We kind of have our simple line drawing here, but let's go in and let's let's zhuzh it up. Let's let's have some fun because he's got no whiskers, he's got no shading. So here we go. Well, first of all, we have this the uh, above the eyes, we have all these wrinkles and grouchiness and whatnot. I like to do little eyebrows just like this. <laughs> they don't really have eyebrows, but that kind of marks this part. This is the part as an illustrator where you can kind of have some fun, where you can, um, you know, I mean, if you want to make him a little happier, a little grumpier, I mean, you can kind of play with those lines if you want to make it a little more illustrated. Um, but right now we're going to go in and we need some whiskers, so we're going to do kind of, a, again, this curved line out front here. Just some dots coming in there and on the other side. And we're going to give him really light, and you don't want to do too much because then it's going to look a little goofy. Just a couple lines to kind of give it that, that look. And now we're going to come in here and we have this nice straw jaw line that I think needs just a little tiny bit of shading. So we're going to come in, I'm going to show you guys how to do a hatching line just close together, about halfway down, you can mark it, a curved line and then when you get down to where his, his, uh, his muzzle sticks out, you can kind of stop. You can just kind of do these diagonal, really quick, really light kind of hatching lines, and that's going to kind of give you a little bit of shape and some shading in there, right? And then also, mountain lions have a tendency to have these little, they have these little um, markings down there. Sorry, my daughter's downstairs talking. I got all distracted. Kind of coming in. See how he's got this shadow kind of coming in there? So we kind of have that. And then he's got this nice dark neck shadow here. And again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing that. But you can kind of play with that and make that darker and whatnot. So there we go. And so this is sort of a basic, quick <laughs> mountain lion drawing. Or puma. Or, you know, take your pick. Jaguar. Not jaguar. Cougar. Sorry. So yeah, so I hope you guys had a good time. I hope you found this fun. I would love to see your guys' work and uh, you continue to work on it and draw it and you know, you can kind of play with it. This was a sort of final piece that I had done, a little smaller, but you know, you can sort of push and pull with all of that. So anyway, thank you guys so much. I don't know if you can see me. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in here at Aurora Public Art. Thanks so much to Jen and Kate for setting this up. And again, a shout out to the Polk Park Zoo for giving me this beautiful photo. And I hope you guys had a great time. And just remember to just stay safe, stay healthy, stay sane, and please stay creative. Take care.